We reintroduce to you the directors of All Cheerleaders Die. film that you did in, in what year? Uh, we shot it in 98, finished it in 99. And that was like fresh out of film school? Like, you could yeah, a year, the a year after film school, Chris and I decided no one was going to give us uh, the opportunity to make our first feature, so we decided to make our first feature together. Um, and we got a little bit of money from our parents and we did it in my, yeah, it was, my hometown. Everybody it was right when the, the, the first digital video camera came out, which was the Sony VX1000. And uh, we edited it on a PC, and we had 18 gigs to edit the movie with. Yeah, it was loaded. Which, which we thought was a lot. Like, it was two 9 gig hard drives that were like each a shoebox. Uh, so we had to like edit two scenes at a time, dump them off the tape, and then edit two more. Um, but it was, yeah, it's kind of how we learned how to actually make a feature after going through film school and making a bunch of shorts and everything. And so, um, and, but the film never came out, it was never properly distributed? Yeah, we we uh, we sent it to Miramax, and, uh, and and then maybe a couple other places, and then we just moved on to other things. But, you know, we weren't really good at like pimping our stuff out. But we want to finally release it once we put this one out. And so, what uh, can you talk about the story? I mean, you, you wanted to go back and revisit it. So, like, it's something you always want to try and do bigger. Yeah, yeah, it's just the, the concept was always so fun to us. We had talked about doing a sequel for a while, um, but then we kind of just, a bunch of time had passed, and we thought revisiting it now that we, you know, kind of learned a lot making other movies. Heavy movies, too, you know, like 10 yeah. years of making, like, really heavy, dark films, and it was like, you know what, let's do one of those, let's do a fun one again, let's go back to that initial impulse, you know? Yeah, we both made movies, like, like fucking with the audience and, like, super intense heavy shit, but like when we hang out together, it's like we just have fun. And so it's like, yeah, why don't we actually try to make a movie that's kind of fun, instead of just fucking with people. Instead of sending people to counsel them at the end of the day. I guess there's a few moments of fucking with people, we can't help it, but it's yeah, true. we were trying to make something fun. If, if you want to see a really notable moment, uh, look up the YouTube video of the man who had an angry reaction to the screening of the woman at uh, Sundance. He did not like that film. Yeah, that guy blew the casket. It was great. <laughs> so, the, one of the great things about this film is really the casting. Um, I mean, you've got all pretty relatively unknown actors and actresses, and they all just deliver. I mean, you, how many people did you guys go through on for the casting? Like, how long was that process? Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. I mean, we, we, we spent a lot of time with casting. Um, yeah, it's a really fun age range to cast from. Um, and it's like you know, being an independent movie and not having to worry about trying to get names and stuff. And in this age range, there's only so many names that mean anything to people. So it's, it's just great to be able to just see a bunch of kids and just cast the best people for the role. Um, and uh, half the cast ended up being like, either from Australia or New Zealand. Uh, yeah, Australia or New Zealand. Yeah, three Aussies and two Kiwis. Yeah, yeah, we didn't even know it. Um, they tricked us with their American accents and the auditions, and then we realized that hey, you know, you guys are all from Australia. This is awesome. We have any questions from the audience? It's really great. So if you do have one, yell it out. Yeah, just shout it out. I can't see anything. Questions, comments. How long did it take, sir? Twenty-four days, 25, 25, 26 days. Yeah, it's all a blur. Yeah. <laughs> very, yeah, very long days. Um, it was all shot in Los Angeles. Very cold. <laughs> yeah, we shot in the mountains and stuff, and, and in rivers and all kinds of stuff. It was, it was, yeah, it was difficult, but you know, it was a lot of fun though. Um, one of the things I like about it is that you guys don't really worry about the kind of the exposition of like the. Um, explaining the magic or anything, it just goes and goes. Can you talk about why you chose to go that route? Just because, you know, every film does that, you know, when you sit around, you know, 30% of the movie is explaining to you what you're seeing, which is just, you know, boring, you know. That's why, that's, that's why I love, you know, Prometheus so much, we were just talking about at lunch, uh, 
Prometheus was awesome because the, you know the story just goes and it unfolds, you know, and it's like it leaves room for discovery. You're not you know setting up any expectations or anything. It's just like God, what's going to happen next? You know, and let the audience figure it out for themselves. I and mean, you guys are smart. You know? yeah, we don't have to hold yeah. your hand the whole way. Yeah, it's just you know we kind of we don't we don't like explanations and stuff. And it's kind of simple. It's like like the kid in the hallway says, "It's fucking magic, dude." That's kind of our explanation for, you know, what Yeah, and Lena's saying, you know, she's like, you know, you shouldn't call Lena a witch. And Lena's like, no, I am a witch. You know, it's like, it's that simple. You know, what more, you know, what more do you don't need to see her origin story in order to, you know, believe that. Yeah, and we also, you know, we, it's part of, it's like the, the first kind of chapter in like, the kind of this expanded universe that we see. And there's kind of secrets in the movie that you won't know until, you know, Two or some, three movies down the line. Yeah, subsequent films, like... You know, like when Alexis, the cheerleader zombie, pops out of the ground at the end, and she says, Lena, and she's pissed off, and Lena says, oh shit, you know, it's like, there's reasons for that that, you know, find out in the next one. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it's just, you know, just trying to keep the pace moving, just keep it fun, and you just kind of got to take that leap with it, or you're not going to enjoy it. You know? uh, can you talk about um, just the, 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 the romance uh, angle in it, that you kind of totally subvert high school romance. Um, yeah, and we wanted to do it in a non-ironic way. I mean, these girls, you know, like just feeling that feeling when you're a teenager of like being in love with somebody, it's just like it fills your whole body and it fills your whole soul, you know. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people laugh when the, the love music comes up and stuff like that, but it's genuine, you know, like there's this real genuine feeling going on between these girls, which, you know, we personally love. And, and yeah, I mean, if you take a step back from it, it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> yeah. But it's hilarious, you know, being a teenager is, a, is hilarious in retrospect. You know? Yeah, I think we both love melodrama. And uh, on that, like, romance cue, you know, when, uh, when Maddie uh, feeds from Lena, and it's like Lena's dreams come true because now this girl needs her, you know, needs her blood and everything. Uh, we had an awesome composer, and on that cue, we kept like pushing and it's like, no, you gotta just go for it more, you know, like tap into your inner 13 year old girl. And he just really <laughs> she loves went it. for it. And, and just gave us this like sweeping, like almost like, you know, like a cue from like Pocahontas or something. And we're just like, yeah, that, that's it. Um, and I think that's also, you know, both like love De Palma and just like how De Palma embraces melodrama. Um, you know, the, the, that, that scene was actually originally the temp cue, like what you saw was cut to um, the, the theme from Carrie. Carrie is a gigantic influence. There's a million influences on the movie, but I think uh, Carrie is maybe one of the Carrie's biggest Carrie's the best high school horror film ever made, so it's like, how can you not be influenced by that? And back to um, uh, Lena and Maddie, who were, who were doing the Q&A last night. Uh, someone was asking about uh, the whole like, uh, lesbian kiss and angle. And they've been friends since they were 11. So yeah. Like, yeah, it was like we were, we're friends. It was like a cuddle. Yeah, like a cuddle. yeah that, that, was, that was a great question last night. Cause the guy's question was basically, lesbians, discuss. <laughs> I, I think he just wanted Caitlin and Shinoa to talk about uh, lesbianism. And, and they obliged him. It was, it was great. Yeah, so. The other thing I liked uh, when we talked about last night is just um, about the setting in high school and about high school, just how time plays out when you're a teenager in high school. There's a comment like that, that was like a week ago. Yeah, you know, I didn't know you then. That was a week ago. You know, like a week ago is like this epic amount of time to a teenager um, because all the you know the thousands of emotions that are felt within that period of time. Well, that's you know what we were trying to capture in our 90 minutes was uh, you know like one moment you're completely crushed, the next moment you're in love, the next moment you know uh, you're an outcast. It's just you know like all those different things you go through during the day as a teenager. You know, we were trying to kind of replicate that cinematically. Yeah, one day of high school can be, you know, like a year of emotions to like an adult. Um, and that's, you know, partly why we said it in like a very condensed time period. Most of the movie takes place over the first day of school. Um, and we also did that so we wouldn't have to deal with anything we didn't want to deal with, like cops uh, or parents or, or any of that kind of stuff. It's like we just tried to leave the adult world like completely out of it, you know, like Charlie Brown and Peanuts and just make it like just these kids and, and their world because um, that's what's interesting to us and when we're writing it we try to avoid any kind of obligatory scenes kind of like the explanation stuff and just have all the scenes be um, you know like either dramatic emotional 
funny, weird, creepy, you know, just try to, you know, stay on that track.